I have been to two doctors and uh, been cleared by specialists to have surgery, uh, laser surgery again on my eyes and the specialist said that they can fix my vision. And then I talked to the lady that's supposed to send the letter to the Dr. Logan Friday and she said, well, I've got to check with him. And when I call back Friday evening, the doctor's on vacation till tomorrow. And I told Regina this morning, I think I'll just show up at his office and say, I'm not going to leave till I get a letter in my hand to carry the doctor up. <laughs> because he, uh, the specialist, said, why are you here? He said, I'm a specialist and you don't have that kind of trouble. And I said, yes, I do. I have more trouble than you know. <laughs> But uh, he, uh, he said, I can take care of the problem. It's not associated with a stroke. And it can be fixed. I'll get a letter to Dr. Logan and a letter to your primary care doctor. Well, that's why I can't still, I can't see. is because that hasn't been done yet. So I took this fine print back to our copier and I blowed it up a hundred and thirty times bigger than it's supposed to be. And uh, as that noise you heard about seven thirty. So anyway, I wish I could give you some news from the quarterly meeting. It was yesterday, it was moved three times. It ended up being at uh, New Hope. But about the time that I was getting ready to go, TV was already on and it was saying, don't drive unless it's an emergency. And I thought, uh, the way it's raining here now, if it gets any harder, I can't see. So it was safer for you and me if I just stayed home yesterday. So that's exactly what I did. I talked to a plumber that you all know well. <clears throat> he was out there working, and I told him what they were saying Saturday was going to be, and he said, well, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> he said, I'm going to stay right at home. Did you? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, people don't want you walking in and out of their houses in the mud and rain anyway. But uh, I'd worked and worked on one of the sermons I wanted to preach at the first of the year, but I'm going to preach one entirely different this morning, so everything's the same. The text will come from 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, and we're going to talk about walking with Jesus. Uh, walking the Christian walk. You can call it whatever you want to. But uh, every one of us make resolutions. I made resolutions for years that I was going to lose weight. And I did. The problem is I keep finding it back. <laughs> I need to hide it somewhere. And if you ever hid stuff so nobody else could find it, you're the one that can. Uh, and you wish to have told somebody. I know a couple of people can hide their own Easter eggs. <laughs> and I'm just about that bad. Careful, I can't careful. talk about it much. But uh, I hope and pray that you'll enjoy this lesson as much as I did putting it together yesterday, even with without power four or five hours. And uh, I just got in my recliner and got close to a window and 
didn't have my magnifying glass, so I hope I can read my writing. <clears throat> and I know I've got uh, three stepsisters that will probably watch this. They said they enjoy hearing me preach. And uh, so far, two of them are coming the first week of February. I don't know how long they plan on staying, but they're going to stay with us. And we're looking forward to that. Uh, never met them. I knew I had one until uh, just a few months ago, and had three stepsisters and a brother, and he just passed away not long ago. I got a picture of him on my phone, and. He looks just exactly like Tolly. And you know, many of you remember Tolly. And uh, he died with a massive heart attack. Not Tolly, but my stepbrother. Wish I could have met him. One of the grandsons is a state trooper in South Carolina. One, I think, works for South Carolina Power and Light. And no, no, very much more than that, but looking forward to seeing you. By now you have turned to text 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. That's all I'm going to read of that verse, and I'm going to tell you there's another verse in the Bible that says, They went out from us because they were not of us. And I'm working on a sermon to go along with that. But I wanted to point this out. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we will have fellowship one with another. And fellowship is going to be, uh, I was waiting for Nicole to mention that. Uh, we voted to change our fifth Sunday service. And it will be more of a fellowship type service. Don't think they'll be preaching. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but uh, we'll be doing a lot of singing and testimonies and different things for a while and we're going to see how that goes. Would you pray with me? Our Father, we pray just now that you will bless us with what we need to preach the Word. We ask you to be with those that are sick. And Lord, I know that Regina was Feeling fine, she said, and then she just got sick. Father, we don't never know from one minute to the next what will happen. What a difference a day makes. And Lord, this can be the start of a brand new year in a good way. And we pray that you will bless us as we fellowship together around your word as we listen to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to us. May we be obedient sons and daughters and may we cherish your voice and Lord speak for your servant listens and may we do exactly what you'd have us to do. Bless us and keep us and at the end, may we leave this place saying it's been good to have been in the house of the Lord. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to see that seven things, and we walk in fellowship with God. And I read that to you. 
very plain out of 1 John 1 and 7. And the Bible says, and His blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. We have heard over and over how we're supposed to walk. People walk in different ways and uh, you take the high road and I take the low road. And we have old paths. About every one of us here, here today are old enough to remember when we didn't fuss about sidewalks. We didn't even have a paved street to walk on. And so we walked the gravel, we walked the grass, we walked the paths through the woods. We didn't have the modern conveniences of the sign that says walk on one side and the sign that says don't walk on the other side. Like the drunk that called his wife and he said, I'm downtown, come and get me. She said, where you at downtown? He said, let me look. I'm at the corner, you walk and you don't walk. <laughs> and uh, sometimes people don't know uh, which way to walk, but I hope at the end of this that you will. The second thing that I want you to see is not only we will walk in fellowship if we walk with God, because there's just one God. And He said there's just one way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we'll get to the other part of that in just a few minutes. But the second thing that I want you to see is this. We will walk in Christ Jesus if we walk the way God tells us to. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8 and John chapter 12 and verse 36 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 4 and 5. The Bible says those who walk in Christ are known as children of light. Those that walk in Christ are known as children of light. And Jesus said this to us. He said, if we walk in the light, we stumbleth not. But if we walk in darkness, we'll stumble. And we can see when we walk in light, but if we walk in darkness, we can't see. You remember the times that you had to walk home maybe from church, maybe from the store, and it being night. I remember the day that Regina and I got married. And our first stop after the wedding, I still lived with my grandfather. Uh, somebody's putting a family record together, and I read part of it while I was in East Tennessee the last time, a few weeks ago. And they said, Bob Dixon and Ronnie, his son, well, I'm not Bob Dixon's son, and they'll watch this, but I'm Bob Dixon's step-grandson, so there's a lot of changing right there. But from the time I was four or five years old, I remember my mother picking me up out of a playpen because it was bad times at my house, handing me to my grandmother whose name was Brittany. That's where my niece that comes here is named after, Brittany. Handed me to Brittany Dixon, who was Bob Dixon's wife. And so Bob Dixon, being my step-grandfather, meant that Brittany was my real grandmother, my mother. My mother said to her, will you get Ronnie out of here? And it was because my father was an alcoholic. He stayed drunk from Friday night 
till Sunday night. And there was nothing but, well, if you've been around a drunk much that likes to cuss and fight, then you would know. Uh, I'm very familiar with that. But my grandmother picked me up. We got in a 39 Chevrolet. And we had a 39 Chevrolet coupe and a 46 Chevrolet pickup truck. And my grandfather got in the pickup truck. My grandmother drove the 39 Chevrolet and me in the seat beside of her going from front to back. No car seats, no seat belts. And I was like a monkey everywhere. I can remember, I don't know why she didn't just give me something to knock me out, like a ball peen hammer. That's probably what I needed, but I remember leaving North Carolina, going to Greenville, Tennessee, and moving in a little house for just a night or two, and then moving to a place that is now called Dixon Hall. And the Dixons lived all over the place. I hadn't been there since then. And I've asked a friend of mine, the next time I come in, I want to go to Dixon Hall or I can't find it. And they said, okay, we'll go, but it's grown up. You won't recognize it. But I want to go see. I remember learning how to dip snuff. <laughs> Except it wasn't snuff, it was cocoa and sugar where I'd pull my lip out and dump it in and I could spit from here to you wouldn't want to be close. <laughs> but anyway, I learned how to walk and dodge trees. And I got to tell a good friend of mine that just not long ago walking down the sidewalk in Asheville, North Carolina, and I was pointing out my old hangout places. And one I pointed, I said, when we get right up here, if they still have the window, look at the booth on the right, just as... I'm still talking, and I look to my left, and he's not there. He's nose to nose and head to head with a big telephone call. Mm -hmm. Because he's looking where I told him to look. <laughs> and not paying any attention. And he walked head on into that pole. He said, I'm not looking no more at what you tell me to look. <laughs> All of us have been driving and somebody in the car saying, hey, look over there. And we take our eyes off the road just for a minute and cover the length of a football field. We need to watch where we're walking. We need to watch where we're driving. We need to watch what Jesus said. If we walk in the light, we need to follow that light. We need to walk right. How many commercials have you seen where Somebody has got a camera or got a phone, which is both most of the time. And you see the commercial, and there's a speaker right there, but they don't see it. And they go right over. We've all seen the commercial where the lady is in the mall, and the pool is out there in the forest, and the woman's. And she goes head over heels right into the pool. And sues the place that she's shopping. Somebody goes to McDonald's and orders a cup of hot coffee. Not paying any attention, pours it right in her lap and sues McDonald's. Don't order hot coffee if you can't handle it, if you can't hold it. They make iced coffee. You can, I don't like it. Jesus said, though, I'd rather you be cold or hot, not lukewarm. 
I don't like lukewarm coffee. But I want to point out to you, we need to watch the light. I have a picture I had to stop on the side of the road last week and take. And it looks like a head in the sky and a body and an arm pointing straight up. Looks like an angel pointing straight up, took off a head shirt road. So who knows? There's a lot of angels out there on head shirt road. I've heard that story. But here comes the light. And if the light is there, we can see. And so let's walk what we can see. I used to be scared to death to walk through places that I haven't been familiar with, didn't know about. And the first time I watched Ray Mar in the jungle, whose star was, Tarzan was on there once or twice, but Ray Mar in the jungle. And there's a man here in town that sometimes looks just like, I ain't gonna say no more. But anyway, they walk through the jungle and the next thing you know, help, help. He looks around and he said, I can't help you. Quit moving. You are in quicksand. And that scared me so bad I didn't want to walk in places I didn't know about. Because there is such thing as quicksand. And did you know that the Bible teaches us, and if we know the Bible the way we ought to, and we think about it, if we start getting in sin, it's like getting in quicksand. The more you get in it, the deeper you go. Amen. And the harder it is to get out. And the Bible teaches us that we need to be careful and walk where good people go. Jesus said, what? I'm the lie. Walk in the light. Follow me. And so that's what we need to do in 2020. I uh, told somebody to cheer. You know, I joke too much probably. And I just talked a few minutes for texting. And uh, the person asked me how I was doing. And I said, I got up this morning for the first time. I can see 2020. <laughs> you get it? It's the first of the year. Well, this person texts me back the right way if I could see, but I still could and I read it and I said, she missed the joke. <laughs> it was a joke on me, but they took it like I got in to have surgery and I'd lot better have it their way than the way I had it. I wished I could see 2020. But walk in the light. Watch what you're doing this year because somebody's watching you. We are seen and read more than Bibles are. And so the third thing that I want you to see is this. We will walk in newness of life. Last year is gone. Somebody told me, forget last week, it's gone. Let's look for the good in this week and look for the good that happened and follow the good things. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says in Psalms 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, It will be a new life. The old life was a walk in darkness. The old life was a walk in darkness. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Think about that. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And that's the way you and I need to make it. 
I remember right after one of my surgeries, I don't know, the last three years has been a nightmare to me. My hospital bill just was it 400000 over or 300 I forgot. But I believe it almost touched a half a million dollars. $483,000. Went in the hospital in April, came home in June. Don't know where May went. But I know this, all things are passed away. If I dwell on that, it won't do me any good. And I remember Mike Galligan walking into the room, and several were there, maybe some of you, and I was laughing about something. I don't know what I had to laugh about. But I was laughing about something and I remember Mike smiling and he said, uh, a good attitude will do as much for you as any medicine they give you. Amen. And we don't have to concentrate on the bad. We don't have to follow the blind. We can follow people in the light and we can forget the bad things behind us. And we can press toward the mark. And we can have a better year this year than we've had before. Jesus had 12 people and He changed the world with them for good. Amen. It means the world to think right. And think good. And think positive. This young lady to my right sat over there one night and she said, Brother Ronnie, you can't die. My daddy's dead and you're my dad now. And I come to you with everything. And don't you leave me. And I said, I don't want to leave you. I don't want to leave nobody. But I'm glad that I can be a light to some people. I'm glad that I can share I read just yesterday somebody sent me a card. And it, it just uplifted me from discouragement and from uh, not thinking right and uh, keep and simply said, keep your eyes on the Lord. He don't change and He's for us. He's not against us. Amen. And if we follow Him, we can't go wrong. And that's where this sermon come from. From that card, the thoughts. And I sat down and started writing. This is the uh, life that the Lord wants us to live. The old past. I went up in the woods not long ago just to see if the old past were there that I used to hunt on. Well, Parts of it were there. And parts of it grew up over the years. And I said, that's what happens to our lives. Sometimes things get in the way. And we can't fulfill our dreams. And we've got to make a new path. There's somebody here today that had to put a line in and if he'd have known Dickie then, he'd have probably called him because the bulldozer's in the way. And nobody there knows how to start it or to move it. And if they ever work on the water line, and I ain't going to say who put it in, but it got there with the machine and it went around that bulldozer. So if they're digging it up, they're going to wonder what in the world happened. <laughs> Appreciate you mentioning that, Brother Rogers. Yes. <laughs> I can remember helping my neighbor who had a mean dog. Just a little dog. Just a little dog, a pug. And she said, I'll keep it in the house. Somebody put that meter in before the house was built.
built. The house was built on the other side of the meter from where they thought it was. So the water came out of the meter and then went around the meter and to the house. I've got to top off the meter. It's a pretty deep meter. But I'm between the meter and the house. Got the top off. She lets a dog out the back door and it runs around. It sees me and it comes a hundred miles an hour at me. <laughs> it was too little to jump that hole. <laughs> I just put the cat back on the meter. I knocked on the door and told the lady, I said, when I get through working, you can let your dog out of the meter. <laughs> I didn't put the dog in there. It just disappeared. <laughs> when we're walking or running, we better watch where we're running. That dog thought he had me, but the trap was set. <laughs> he did not get over it. This, the fourth thing that I want you to see is we will walk in the fear of the Lord. Have you ever read the Bible when it, you see that word fear in a lot that you're reading and you think, am I supposed to fear God? In this particular incident, it says that it is to reverence the Lord. This is in reverence of the Lord. Serve Him. Follow Him in reverence. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Psalm 16, verse 8. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. It means to reverence the Lord. Don't let that word fear scare you. God loves you. And God wants you to love Him. And the only way God would want you to fear Him is in holiness. But God wants you to know that He loves you. And He wants to help you not scare you. And so we see that if we walk in love in Ephesians 5 and 2, then we, we will be doing what the Lord wants us to do. He tells us this. He says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given Himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. And so, if we walk in love, and we know the Lord loves us, and if we love Him, let's do a little test here. What does the Bible say that can prove we love the Lord. It says, if you or me, let's say if we, let's put us all in there. If we love the brethren, then I know you love the Lord. That's paraphrased, but that's what it says. How do we know that people are Christians? They have love for the brother. We love each other. And if we love the Lord, we'll love His people. The Spirit bears witness. So think about it. We will walk in love. Ephesians 5 2 tells us that. If we follow the Lord. And number 7 tells us this 
by number of six. We will walk in faith. 2 Corinthians 5.17 We just saw that a while ago. Or 5.7, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 5.7 For we walk by faith and not by sight. That's what that fellow was doing when he hit the telephone call. Mm -hmm. Not walking by sight. But what the Bible's teaching us here is we need to read this book and we need to do what thus saith the Lord. This book says, why do you call me Lord and do not the things that I say do? That's in plain English in your Bible. Why do you call me Lord and do not the things that I say do? I told you that somebody came up to me in another church. They said, why do you preach the same message the last four Sundays? When are you going to change? I said, when you start doing what I'm preaching. <laughs> then I can get on something else. Somebody asked all the time, what you preach on Sunday? That platform up there in front of the church. That's about what people remember. I guess next to chicken, preachers are talked about more at lunchtime on Sundays than anybody else. But it says here, we will walk in faith and not by sight. And one day, our sight will turn, or our faith will turn to sight. We will see Him face to face. In contrast to those who walk by sight, Abraham, as an illustration, Abraham said, I'll go. You just tell me where. Abraham was such a good, trusting man, and yet he was caught in a lot of lies. He let Lot choose first, and Lot chose the well-watered plains. He ended up in Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham chose to follow the Lord. Hebrews 11, verses 5 and 6. Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. There's just so much, but it starts out in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. This is where the text comes from. And the last one, number 7. I didn't even hear amen. Somebody listen. Mm -hmm. 3 John chapter 1, verse 4. Beloved, I wish above all things, and this ought to be our wish for people. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you'll prosper. that thou mayest prosper and be in health. You don't know what that verse has said to me lately. Even as thy soul prospers, for I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. Even as thou walkest in the truth. And the writer goes on to say, I have no greater joy. Now what would you be talking about if you're talking to somebody and you make that statement, I have no greater joy 
and it's in your Bible, than to hear that my children walk in truth. And listen to me. If you don't get nothing else today, you are God's children. And this verse says that God has no greater joy than to see you doing right and to see you walking in truth and living the way you are to live. That's what God said. And if God says this brings greater joy to me, we all know people that feel it as well as tell it. How many times have we seen Nicole come up here and call Coy up here? Start talking about him, but the tears start rolling. See, that's not tears of sorrow, that's tears of joy. No greater joy you can have than your children walk in truth. Amen. And you don't have to worry about it. And God is telling us that today. This coming year, you'll bring joy to God's heart if you follow the Lord Jesus in the light as He walks before us and not walk in darkness. Don't believe darkness. The Bible teaches that people love darkness rather than light because what? Their deeds are evil. I didn't say that. This book says it. So let's set an example this year. Let's walk in the light as He's in the light. Let's pray for each other. We know we pass from death unto life because we have love for the brother. By the way, that means, when it says brethren, that means Christian people. God is angry with the wicked <coughs> today. Don't think you're sinning when you get angry. Anger is not a sin. If anger was a sin, then Jesus Christ has sinned, and I'll attest to you today, my Bible teaches that Jesus has never sinned. But he got angry when they started casting lots in the temple. He turned the money changers' tables over. Mm -hmm. He took a whip and ran them out. You've made my father's house, that's a house of worship, but then a thief. He got angry with the wicked. And the Bible says he's angry with the wicked every day. And sometimes I want to look up and say, Lord, is that me? But you know, the same book that says that says you can get angry. But sin not. That's what it says. You can't control your emotions sometimes. You can't control your feelings sometimes. And some things might make us angry. But we don't need to act on that anger. We need to be careful and ask the Lord to help us. But you've not sinned because you got angry. It just proves you're a card-carrying member of the human race. The devil wants us all to be angry. But love each other. Pray for each other. Encourage each other. And if you don't have anything else to pray for, pray for me. I need to pray and you need to practice. It'll help all of us. Let's stand and we'll be this Lord, we thank you for this another day to come to your house and hear your word. Father, we're thankful that we can put all of these prayer requests right at the foot of the cross. Lord, just be with us and watch over us. Lord, be with this congregation. 
and draw us closer to each other and closer to you throughout this coming year. Lord, we just thank you for all you've done for us and all that you're going to do for us. And we ask you to just watch over us now and go with us and keep us safe as only you can. That's these and all things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.